they still get to keep trying. It's a best of five. Uh, if you are just joining us, you're watching the Air Mac Carry Me 5 tournament, uh, which is basically where we take uh, no prefab teams. Anyone who signs up, we pair good uh, high-ranking players with lower-ranking players to tr deliberately try to even the teams out. In this particular case, we didn't have anyone sign up who is bad. Like, there's no true noobs in this particular tournament. Instead, what we have is a lot of various ranking players. And rather than have Happy Death and Pro 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 sign up together as one prefabricated team, you pair Happy Death with someone like Elf28, who is by no means a bad player, but, as far as ranking stats go, is the worst player available. Uh, meanwhile, Spore Freaking Strider, you know, they're on our right-hand side in the green team. They are not bad players either. But overall, the rankings for all these different teams come to be about average. So the question is, if we give ha Happy Death a slight handicap as far as teammate, can we overcome him with two people who, 1v1, would never have a prayer, but 2v2? Maybe. Maybe. So this is our attempt at a balanced tournament. Spore Freak playing the bomber versus Happy Death bomber. Strider playing in a Paladin, a definitely underrepresented mech overall. Uh, what Paladin is, is basically the tank. Uh, takes a lot of hits uh, when he's on the ground, has a big frontal shield, and gets reduced damage to the front. Uh, also has passive auras that buff all the units around him, so uh, can toggle between like attack strength or, or defensive strength, or even speed, really. Uh, in addition, has a couple cool stasis and armor active abilities. That he can use so it's a really good disruption mech not really good in just a straight on firefight but good in the attrition sense and that going up against a paladin you're going to have a very hard time uh just killing him and doing damage but happy death is the bomber is going to be able to do a lot of area of effect damage uh using those bomber bombs to get the napalm effect damage over time and you can see the napalm from those bomber bombs actually hurts mines so if he spams enough bombs he'll also know that he's not pushing into heavy mines when they do actually run in so creeps coming in but green team really not trying to capture too much because as soon as that's captured that's going to immediately go neutral way too many red guns pointed at that particular middle outpost so what red's doing a couple things here one of which they've got a generator on that front outpost the generator is pretty helpful because that's boosting the energy of that front outpost Strider getting a little bit too brave there and does get taken out by the focus air fire from both of those mechs. There are multiple red seekers here and a couple flackers as well, so flying around in the air going to be hard to do. But the generator is very handy because that means that you'll notice that every time Happy Death comes here to heal up, they don't run out of energy. Uh, that this host stays very high energy, whereas this one, as the green players start to take damage, as they try to start healing their units you'll find that that outpost energy drops pretty significantly and they're going to start starving. Uh, Strider's not a happy camper because he's getting focus fire by two players combined with five flackers and three seekers. Red team, it's kind of difficult to see in all the flashing numbers, but red team has an almost entirely anti-air composition. So doing repeated flyovers regardless of what you're carrying is basically suicide. Spore Freak trying to do the hit and run with the bomber bombs just like Happy Death is doing. Overall, uh, Tug of War has not been decided yet. I would give Red Team the default since they have the high ground. Uh, green Team, meanwhile, muscling against the status quo. Uh, they're on the low ground, so their units on the low ground don't really have a firing arc to get up. Whereas the units on the high ground are probably better able to shoot down. Also, Red Team has an Osprey. Osprey being the mech that heals, so Elf is sitting around just sticking his beams into those tanks, giving them overheal, giving them free hits. Now Red is taking a couple unnecessary casualties, but that Osprey should be able to keep these pretty well topped off, especially given the fact of that generator on that front post. Four Freak going to try and do a little bit of distraction, drop a jackal or two on the fort. That will just uh, force Happy Death, force uh, Elf to come back and take a look at what's going on, and maybe the bomber can take advantage of that. Doing some good damage to the tanks, but if they don't die, the Osprey is going to make sure that, well, they stay that way. So, Striker and Spore Freak are going to need to change their tactics a little bit. Looks like they're trying to tech into artillery a little bit. That is, Red is moving around on the bottom side. A green is actually moving around on the top side, and what we'll find is that eventually 
this tank Tetris will continue until Red has a pretty big clump pretty much just south, and someone starts to consider, should I just push straight to that top outpost? And we're going to see as they extend that reach that branching out and attacking the other outpost actually becomes more and more viable. I think Red's probably in a better position to do that because uh, this is not a perfectly symmetrical map. This is actually asymmetric. So left-hand team, I would say, does have a slight advantage in that respect. Happy Death going to drop a couple jackals of his own, acknowledging that green team is probably unit capped by now. When you have a stalemate situation like this, back capping and attacking the fort and drops get so much stronger for precisely that reason, because your opponents literally cannot defend themselves. They cannot build the units to do it. Um, and it costs too much time to go anywhere else. So Elf is going to pick up three Gemini and just snipe this outpost. What'd I tell you? Uh, just because Green Green can't defend it. And if he does neutralize this outpost, then they're going to be completely unit capped. And then they definitely won't be able to build anything. And Red's going to have quite a bit of momentum. Um, decides to get out of there before running too low on health. Uh, isn't going to get picked off. Probably going to try the same thing again pretty soon. Um, but if he can coordinate with Happy Death via voice chat or anything like that, and you drop six tanks all together, you're going to get a much bigger change much faster. That coordination can be pretty powerful. So, Strider trying to abuse that low ground as much as possible. Turns out when Haladin, Paladin throws his hammer directly into a wall, it doesn't actually hit the wall. It magically flies up directly over the wall and then runs parallel to the next level. So, using his Paladin Hammer, able to consistently damage the units on the high ground without taking any return fire. Elf going to move in with a couple more Gemini. I would anticipate him ferrying more. Maybe? Maybe? No? Okay, just dropping those. Dropping those for the distract. Says, you know what, we're at unit cap. I'm okay losing a couple units. So, neither team really able to get a firm advantage. This is part of the reason that people say, God damn, Dust? Really? That map? Because this is the edge of the map. This is the edge of the map. You really... You can't move without your opponent seeing it. You don't have a whole lot of options available. Like, the mid-fight is the fight. It's, it's kind of a tug-of-war map rather than something where you have multiple options. You don't have a whole lot of strategic depth to, depth to this. So... The bombers are probably going to end up getting shut down by an abundance of flackers in late game anti-air. But what we're finding is that busters are probably going to be the game winner here. Busters do lots of damage to tanks. They also have very strong frontal armor. Red team also has the Osprey. So by default, I would give red team a pretty firm advantage. Paladin, while fairly powerful and fairly annoying, is easily out dps by Osprey. And that Paladin is really only effective when he's in the middle of a fight and you're actively buffing all your other units that are around you. Which, in this particular scenario, if either team pushes, if they truly just advance with their units, they're probably going to have a bad time. Not because the other team would be able to relocate quickly, um, but because the bomber. I mean, each team has a bomber, and if you push, your units clump together, and that damage over time with an area of effect gets really strong really fast so looks like strider might go for it going ahead and starting to put his tanks on follow but may want to shuffle around a little bit first i think he's got a strong inkling that he'd like to push forward through the top because all of green team's units are getting clumped together that's mostly bad because when you're starting to clump any area of effect weapons, the artillery, the bomber are going to be significantly more powerful. And Happy Death continuing to drop those bombs, but green team, just like red, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least ten flackers. So just doing a flyover is a dangerous thing to do. Scouting is a dangerous thing to do when there's that quantity of anti-air. At the same time, when you have that much anti-air, you're weak on the ground. So anyone who is a ground mech, anyone who stays focused on the ground, is going to have a little bit of an easier time pushing forward. So actually, I would argue getting more tanks uh, might actually be the solution for Green Team. To start selling off some of these flackers, get more tanks, and then push forward, but try to spread so that you can simultaneously push top and bottom, because Red Team also has probably arguably too much anti-air, that there's kind of a composition change going on. But Green Team, because they're not really pushing, they're not really losing units, 
and they're unit capped, they're starting to float credits. When you have 40,000 credits or 20,000 credits and you literally can't build anything, you're allowing the game to stagnate. There, there's nothing's going to help you by continuing not to move in that in that particular scenario. So at this point, their tanks are becoming more and more expendable because as you accumulate more credits, you, your ability to replace those tanks is also increasing. So. They're trying to do harassments, for free getting too brave, not forgetting about all the anti-air right here. But that's kind of the case for both teams. Uh, players just getting sniped here and there when they get uh, overextend just a little bit and fly into all those flackers. Uh, I would like to see, I think Red's best strategy in this particular case would be to transition into busters. Now admittedly they've just gained control of mid, green team's been forced to push most of their units to the low ground. And then dumping all that napalm on the bridge, so no one wants to leave their units on the bridge anymore. So Strider and Torfrey are going to be moving their units off the bridge. The red team with the high ground is going to have a higher unit cap, is going to have a bigger army, is going to have a scarier army. And it's only a matter of time until green loses. So if they're going to do something, they've got to do it soonish, or it's just going to get worse. The situation is not going to improve. They're trying to do a little bit of harassment, but a single jackal ain't going to cut it, especially against a broken unit like gangsters. Gangsters eat jackals for breakfast, and that's not even an exaggeration. Like, they wake up every morning and they just eat a couple of jackals. They crush them in their bowl. Selling off a couple, a couple jackals on the green team. So overall... Happy Death and Elf's game to lose. If they transition into Busters, they're going to have a much easier time leapfrogging up. Busters do have slightly longer range than tanks. They're slightly tougher than tanks, especially against this Gemini-centric tank composition. Uh, the only problem is going to be that bomber. Now that the bombers are getting to be higher level, those bombs are getting pretty powerful. Like, let's see Spore Freak drop some bombs on this and see what happens. I mean, that's... Considering they're free, that's that's a lot of damage. Now, they're doing their purpose. They're keeping you from just holding a clump there. The, the bomber isn't necessarily supposed to just kill all those units. It's supposed to force you to relocate, force you to change the engagement. Now, when you're on a small, narrow map like Dust, you really don't have a lot of ways you can do that. Uh, so I'd say we're, the reason this game is, is holding fairly steady, it's not really because the players are shy or bad. It's because of the map. The, the, this is really the reason why a lot of people don't like Dust, is because it is this kind of tug-of-war format. So, Happy Death moving in with a couple of Goliaths. Interesting. No healing units, so... Looks like the Goliaths can see each other, but they can't quite shoot at each other. So they're just pointing their guns menacingly, saying, Hey man, I see you over there. Don't you think about hitting that fire button. Strider looks like he doesn't get taken out. Body block for Spore Freak. Spore Freak actually may end up getting killed from Focus Fire. Starting to crank out Gorgons as well. When you want a game to slow down, you start getting Gorgons. Gorgons are the heavy, heavy anti-air unit. Strider with a... Oh, are we going to hit 100,000? Are we going to hit 100,000? And there we go. Strider is now officially credit capped. So every second that they are not using their units is not even money in the bank. It's just wasted money that doesn't exist. So at this point, Green needs to use their units. They need to get out on the map. They need to throw their units around. Because Green nominally seems to be a little bit more efficient as far as how they're using these units. Green is taking fewer casualties for similar similar exchanges so over time green's building up that bank and red's actually staying fairly low but green's still unit cap so what you need is green to actually start moving out and you know the uh, bomber from spore freak could easily take out another 10 12 unit cap uh, from the red team by taking out those whoppers. So red team's just going to get a fully socketed bank of whoppers. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw green team start to do the same. Hot damn, more whoppers. Because when you don't have when you don't have any more unit cap to build units, clearly just build a unit that improves your unit cap. There's no other indicator that something could be improved. 
But this big clump of green anti-air units on the low ground, there's actually Gorgons and Flackers tucked in there. I'd like to see them start to sell off those Flackers and start to get more Goliaths and Gorgons, if only so that their composition is slowly improving. Core Freak actually calling the GG, which I definitely think is a bit premature. But I guess if you've lost the mid outpost and you don't feel like doing anything with your units, by all means, just say we lose and then play again. I, I guess that works. Strider still with 51,000 credits in the bank. So, I mean, even if they take heavy casualties here, they are pretty much replaceable. That's three to four Goliaths, uh, a couple of Gorgons for sure, that he could be building, um, but can't because they're still unit capped. So Gorgon might take out Spore Free, a couple of Gemini getting dropped forward. Maybe he just said the GG to bait Red into moving forward. Spore Freak is able to start neutralizing outposts, start killing Whoppers. He needs to take out the ones on the fort. If he does that, keep Red unit capped, then they'll see the same problems going the other direction. Red won't be able to build anything to defend. Red now trying to press forward, getting a little bit impatient. Starting to overextend. Happy Death might get killed here. He's got no energy, but no more Helix on this side. So maybe he'll get tagged with some bombs. Unfortunately, Flackers don't really see through that gap underneath the bridge. Otherwise, Happy Death would have been a red mist by now. Uh, so red does get pushed back from that bottom outpost. Spore Freak not really pressing forward. Able to neutralize several outposts on the other side of the map. But not actually pressing that advantage. Not getting any infantry over. So green team... Definitely has all of their eggs in one basket. The Osprey is down. It's time to move. It's time to push. You can push one contiguous clump and make a lot of magic happen. Or ferry or do any number of things because Red Team is going to have to pick up each and every single one of those things and bring it back separately to try and counter that. So Red Team being spread out is a good thing and a bad thing. It makes them more susceptible to a wedge push. But instead, we're going to try a Leapfrog War, and we're going to go strength to strength. So Spore Freak, not quite going down. That outpost does start to lo run low on energy. No Osprey here for the green team, so these units are going to get more and more damaged over time. Uh, Strider taking massive damage because this is... You're using your mech against a variety of anti-air units. There's a Goliath, yes, but there's mostly anti-air. That outpost immediately runs dry. Strider tries to get another heal for the Gorgon off of that. If they had a generator on that front outpost, so much, so many things would be going better for them. Um, but they find that they just don't have the energy to keep their units healed, and the quantity of repair units it would take to start sinking that sort of uh, stuff would be just way too much. Elf with the overshield, just keeping all those uh, red units glowing. Elf Gets, loses half his health just by getting too close, just by going over the, the chasm for a half second. This is where Happy Death might... Actually, no, trying to bomb that would be suicide. Happy Death may go down here. Just trying to get that Goliath to the fort. He loses the Goliath. He can always just jump around. So Happy Death is going to be just fine. Let's say the initiative is on red team. Yeah, you have the center outpost. You have the unit keep upkeep advantage. All they have to do is push right, honestly, because the green team will not be able to bring their units back nearly fast enough to deal with that. So at this point, all red needs to do is hover over here, hit R, and then bring any supplementary units they want. The bomber will be able to do enough to consistent damage to the Goliaths that the red Goliaths are going to be able to out-DPS those, no problem. Green trying to probe in there, trying to get a couple of kills. But I'm thinking red team's going to be able to come up here with some fast units, outmaneuver the Goliaths, go to the bottom as well. And they should be able to make an angle happen. So, yep, runs in with the fast units, neutralize the post. Green team is now finding themselves completely unit capped again, unable to build anything, unable to ferry anything because there's too much anti-air around. So Spore Freak goes down, Happy Death is now going to drop his creeps, and green team is finding themselves with a clump of units that is doing nothing because it's not in range of any valuable targets. So now it's up to red team to start pushing this up, and then green is just going to get completely outmaneuvered because they're insisting on not using their units in any of these engagements. So really... Um, you can say red team's that good. I'm going to say green is is failing to failing to use their assets. 
So Happy Death going to wipe out Spore Freak again because multiple flackers up there still. Strider might get taken out as well because this outpost goes dry pretty darn quick. Uh, Red Team does lose control of that one outpost, but they shouldn't have any trouble reclaiming it, uh, especially with a few extra gangsters on the field. Strider trying to drop some creeps, but with the gangsters, those are just not going to last, even though they're level 4 creeps, so... By all means, let's fray the units one by one. Uh, we could easily relocate this clump. You could push them forward. You could ferry them across. You've got enough tanks. Uh, there's a variety of things that can be done, um, but it is good to see that they're positioning them somewhere, although they're doing it in a defensive form, so their green team is basically ceding control of this top outpost uh, when they move these units back here, when they could be just pushing them around on a capture command and easily just plow through all those red units, reclaim that post, and then come back. So Elf getting another overheal. Uh, at this point, now that green's relocated, they've got a big wide concave here. Pushing in the bottom side is probably inadvisable, but dropping a goliath on the fort yeah, yeah, that's going to be noticeable. I think they might feel that. But the only the only response you've got is the one tank you have back at home, and Goliaths do a lot of damage and they have a lot of health, so Strider may actually get taken out here if he's not careful. There you go. There you go. Yes! Seven or eight flackers here. Spore Freak cannot stay for more than a half second. Red Team just pushing right in with all of their units. Uh, you know, they would have been outnumbered, but just going strength to weakness, the fact that green is so strung out, attacking one side with the whole clump all at once, that's what's going to do the damage. Completely wipes through that, is going to neutralize this top outpost, capture the neutral outpost with the four creeps that are coming in, be able, if they wanted to, to just push right up onto the hill, and because they've got this outpost advantage now, making a lot more money, have a lot more upkeep, can easily drop jackals or anything. Happy Death nowhere to be seen, really should be dropping bomber bombs on this as well, but it's going to settle for creeps, which that's okay. Um, yeah, probably going to reposition a little bit, but now that they've firmly solidified that top post just by pushing those units up, uh, probably going to have an easy time with it. What I would expect them to do is drop a generator on this front outpost and heal all the units with the outpost itself rather than depend on the Osprey heal. Uh, green team changing their composition a little bit, going exclusively heavy units. Goliaths, um, Gorgons, Devastators. I mean, those are really buff tanks. Yeah, but they're just tanks. And if they're not actively shooting anything, then they're, they're a sunk investment as far as upkeep goes. So Strider boosting the damage, trying to get that Devastator to do as much damage as possible. Hmm. Yep. Yep, here we are again. So now how is Red Team going to outmaneuver this because of Green's lack of mobility? Well, I would say push straight for the fort. And they're just going to take this path and go right around uh, and hit that port fort from the back. Now if they use a couple of lighter units, a couple of gangsters, it's going to be mighty easy for them. Uh, and at this point, now that they have this outpost, they can easily drop uh, a couple of jackals, a couple of gangsters, whatever they want, over on the back, as well as take out all those whoppers and just completely hamstring any kind of green resistance. Strider's not going to go down, but he did drop just a couple creeps, easily dealt with. So just waiting on red to see their options. They're going to take out these whoppers. That's going to be three upkeep lost. Six. Now land and take out the others. Or not. That's cool too. So green team still cannot build anything, so they just find themselves with a fixed number of units. Starting to float way too many credits again. Red's able to stay fairly bankrupt. So when you've got 80,000, 50,000 credits, that tells you that you, you're you not making the most of, of the resources you have available. Uh, they could lose this Devastator. They could replace it easily. Um, but they they just need to do damage with what they have and staying here and not trying to go on the offensive. They're just... They're waiting to lose. Um, that unless you take another outpost, unless you attack the fort, you cannot win. That's not how Airmech works. So we'll see how brave they get with that Devastator. Jump that forward. You have a Goliath as well. You can start bringing Goliaths as well. Now, the Paladin is on the low ground, doing the stasis, cutting the DPS in half. Um, but once again, no Osprey, so they're finding it fairly difficult to keep these things alive, as well as with the fact that there's no generators, so they can't actually heal on the outpost. They get sucked dry almost instantly, so now they've just got a damaged Devastator, and they got to wait a half hour for their repair units to do anything. 
And there you see Green's predicament. This is why Paladin, arguably not the best choice for mech. I think Osprey would have been significantly stronger. For the reason that even though Paladin buffs the units, Paladin increases the staying power. Did I say something along the lines of Red Team is probably going to move their units around this angle and drop the fort as much as possible? Okay, cool. Because uh, that, that's pretty much all they can do. And then Green Team, yeah, they might be able to move in, but you're talking about something like 6 to 8 Goliaths knocking at your fortress door. And that's going to be it. Red Team's basically going to win. Even though that outpost is neutralized because green has no ability to build units to defend. So they can try and play tank Tetris all day, um, but they're, they're not going to really be able to respond to this. So that that's going to be GG. I would blame green's inaction on this loss. Uh, they're, they're too intimidated by happy death. They're too intimidated by what could happen if they push and just failed to use their units in any reasonable way. Floating way too many credits. You have full upkeep, full credits. Really, the only thing you can do is push. So I, I think green team through. Um, I, I, I'd call that a throw. Fortunately, they get to try and prove themselves again. Hopefully, on another map. Holy crap! And not dust.